the best way to describe an on-premise solution, it's, it's probably more like, for some people, the older traditional way of deploying hardware and software. Large enterprises have data centers, offices, where they install all of their IT equipment. The IT team is quite sizable. There's lots of expertise within a company that can install, manage, essentially feed and water all of the technology and business applications an enterprise would need without going to any external provider. And this to me is quite a step towards the older traditional uh, IT model where everything is installed within the enterprise. The IT team is in charge of the firewall, employees VPN into the office or they go physically to the office where they have a fixed desk with a, a terminal that's hardwired into the corporate network. So I guess to me, on-prem on suggests absolutely everything is in the hands of the corporation, the enterprise, and it's fully managed by on-site IT expertise. Yeah, I think um, I agree there, Mike. You know, we're, we're seeing a little bit of resurgence of this. I'm not going to call it old fashioned in any way because there no. are different drivers for people to want to go on prem. But that more traditional model of, yeah, we're going to look after everything ourselves in our own environments. Yeah, certainly seeing that um, coming back a bit. Historically, there with this, we call it traditional IT model, where everything is installed on premise, the, the drive to move to the cloud was because the perceived costs, the cost models were, were far more beneficial than hosting. The need to swap out equipment as it reached its age, you know, I think the, th the average age of an IT asset is three years before it's written off or it, it, it depreciates significantly in value. There was more flexibility because we all moved to a roaming workforce. You know, we're often seen working from the airport departure lounge, from a Starbucks, from a, any kind of remote location. You know, we're all working from home today. Cloud gives you far, or was perceived to give you far greater flexibility. You know, all of the redundancy was taken care of. Your data went to the cloud and the cloud provider provided you with a good SLA and all of the resilience to ensure that your data was secure. And I guess that there's been, up until the last five years or so ago, a drive to the cloud for those reasons. Whereas now, as, as Adrian says, we're seeing something of a resurgence of the return to on-premise because with the cost of energy these days, we are seeing a rise in costs, uh, or a rise in cost, I should say, for cloud providers. There's not so much some enterprises can do for customization. So if you've got bespoke requirements, that doesn't fit very well with cloud providers as such. There are some perceived security issues. We need to be real. We live in a world there where there are bad actors and they do target cloud providers. And there have been breaches noted. And for some, the, the, the change to move back on-prem comes from regulatory compliance. Your data must be in your control. It must be physically in your country, nay, in your data centers. So there's, I guess, reasons, there's lots of compelling reasons to go to the cloud. I'm not saying people are not doing that at all, far from it. But there is a new place in modern IT where on-premise makes sense for some versus cloud making sense for, for others. Yeah, and that kind of split is, is is well seen. Picking up on your point of, of sovereignty, that's a definite drive that we're starting to see to push people towards the more on-prem approach. In terms of cloud, I, I, I agree with you. I think maybe some companies looked at cloud to be a massive cost saver over time, and I'm not sure that they've necessarily found that. So cost is also playing into what people are doing. You know, as budgets and expenditure is squeezed as we go in, there is now much more of a decision to be made around whether it's cloud first. So yeah, totally agree, Mike. One other interesting point, in every sense of the word, this traditional IT model, people would take their business application to the cloud or there would be someone hosting a business application. And you know, the, the tech world that Assertia lives in is one of providing digital trust solutions. And there are very big providers in that space. Uh, and we supply technology to those providers because unlike managing an office environment, an exchange or a messaging environment, the skills required to operate at high digital trust solutions are not as in abundance. There's a, a worldwide IT security shortage right now. And so one of the huge drivers for people taking, in particular, digital trust services to the cloud was that lack of expertise. And I think that the interesting point there is we are now starting to see something of a change 
in particular in IT security. You know, those those people are going through courses, they are being trained, educated, call it what you will, but there does seem to be a, a, this, this gap of skills being closed, which means people are more willing to host high trust security solutions themselves versus this entire reliance on cloud. And, and there are 100% use cases where you're never going to see an on-prem publicly trusted CA. I think mean, let, let's be real about that. The providers are there, they're audited, they're built in such a way that it's cost prohibitive for an enterprise to be able to do that. So you you will always see a cloud use case for TLS, cloud use case for code signing, and cloud use cases for remote signing service providers. You're, you're never going to see a, those guys kind of disappear. Yeah, and I think that idea of homegrown growing some talent within an organisation is taking speed as well. Um, and I'm hearing of apprenticeships, uh, maybe that's not mm -hmm. quite the right, right word in the IT world, but the idea that companies are reinvesting, reinvesting in their people. You know, I think on the back of COVID, there's been a lot of retraining amongst people, reskilling, upskilling, and that lends itself a lot more in some ways to the to the on-premise view so yeah there is a there is a kind of a step change i think there um you know in developing individual members of staff in an organization as well so i, I don't think you can categorize any given organization the technology is used everywhere let's face it i mean it's used around the home to secure applications accessing the cloud it's used in apps on your smartphone and it's pervasive in every walk of life so if you're using your mobile phone on the london underground you're going to be using a digital certificate from a digital certificate provider to access the wi-fi network if you're in an office, the operating system applications running will use a trusted credential from an internal or an external provider to securely access a business application, securely access a Wi-Fi network. We even use digital credentials on our employee badges to enter into buildings. So it's not really a case of looking at which organizations or, or categorizing an, an organization. So you'll, you'll, you'll see it in absolutely every walk of life. I guess what will change will be the size of the organization will drive how many of those trust services they have. So as, as, as I mentioned earlier, having skilled people that could operate a CA, no or certification authority can deal with the operation of a hardware security module. These are very expensive, specialized pieces of equipment and technology where you you might have those hosted for you because you, you're a small to medium sized enterprise you don't have the expertise or you might be a large government department you might be uh, a member of the cryptographic center of excellence the internal key and certificate management function where those skills are uh, going to reside so I, I think the tipping point here will probably be the size of the organization if anything yeah and i think you know whereas in the past we might have specifically drawn mention to highly regulated industries as being a, a, a you know a sweeter spot for on-prem um, i think that's changing as well and we're seeing more and more enterprises still requiring this kind of high trust um, software on-prem to make sure that it, it, it works into what they're trying to do. So it's not just governments and finance and pharma. Increasingly, we're seeing retail, we're seeing other non-traditional areas requiring that high trust and 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 that that detailed approach. So yeah, I see that I th see that spreading as well as time goes on. Uh, more people requiring uh, that kind of technology, definitely. There's still a place for cloud, there's still a place for on-prem, yeah. and those two things are intermixing. But where we see huge success at Assertia is this, this, this need for the hybrid approach. You yeah. know, we, we talk about publicly trusted certificates coming from a variety of providers for securing e-commerce at so the TLS provider. We talk about remote signing providers, your TSPs, your QTSPs, providing AATL and qualified electronic signatures. Those are never going to go on-prem, but the need to use their services on-prem is, is quite critical to some businesses. So being able to deploy a business application like Assertia Signing Hub within the enterprise where you keep 100% access to your documents, your data, it's sovereign to you, it's it's going to stay within your business. But leveraging a remote service such as a QTSP where the signing hub or the business application will send document hashes to the cloud where the user can authorize a remote signature perhaps 
that signature then is returned to the business application or to signing hub and you know, the data never leaves the enterprise. So there's this uniqueness of having this hybrid approach, the most flexible deployment options that our products bring to the market is, is, is quite key. And I think it's very interesting to mix those or mix the on-prem and cloud provider use case in that scenario. Yeah, and I think, you know, we're one of the very few suppliers around the world that can offer those three use cases, okay? So on-prem or in the cloud, or some kind of hybrid approach and you know that's a great strength for our customers as they evolve in their journey where they might want to move from cloud to on-prem or maybe the other way around we have the expertise you know and kind of past history to be able to help them with that and so yeah very important that those three those three deployment cases can be covered by by assertion Your budget is, is going to govern what you what you can afford and let, let's all be real technology is expensive in particular high trust solutions where you're buying in specialized equipment so the hardware security module they come from several leading vendors on the face of the planet if you're going to have a, a collection of trust service pieces of software you're going to want to buy a network appliance or a network hsm those can be cost prohibitive for once if you're a smaller layer if you're a small uh, to medium-sized enterprise so you, you've got to consider cost and, and be realistic which is why you would always see some benefits of using cloud for security services so deploying a ca deploying all of the foundation work for the issuance and management of a digital certificate the equipment the software the personnel the premises you know you've got to be audited if you want to leverage public trust and then if you're a small a smaller player, a smaller enterprise, yeah, you would uh, leverage a cloud provider. But you know, as, as you edge towards the larger businesses that have more budget and have more expertise in-house, you might start to see people, not just for regulatory reasons, but wanting more control and wanting to bring applications like digital trust, digital trust solutions in-house. Yeah, and I th yeah, and I think you've touched on another great point there, uh, Mike. The kind of we're we're looking to be flexible with our customers who are always trying to juggle this cost cost kind of one one touch cost capex against ongoing costs opex, and um, and we spend a lot of time as a company making sure that we fit within budgets, but also what kind of model model they want. And again, you know, Assertion as a supplier is very flexible in terms of pricing models, um, you know, what suits best to the customer. Um, so flexibility in deployment, flexibility as well against costs. For me, definitely cost, security, you know, that, that all important. You're, you're, if you're talking on-prem, your data never leaves your corporate network. And then there's regulatory, regulatory compliance. You, you might be operating in a highly regulated industry such as healthcare. Patient data is extremely confidential. So that categorically would mean, again, data, you know, data security, but you're complying with a local regulation or a security policy that means that data never leaves your enterprise. We live in a very fast moving world. The internet and technology is, is evolving at an extremely rapid rate. You know, we've we've done many assertion on sessions and many podcasts where we talk about the rapid rate of change. We've seen technology evolve and use cases evolve enormously through the pandemic. That that brought many more digital use cases into our lives. You know, this whole buying food and, and shopping online, electronically queuing for places to buy tickets, to buy produce, but to buy products, all the way through to the world now recovering and healing itself from the tragedies of the pandemic. You know, technology continues to evolve to provide more flexibility, more cloud services, but also needs to flex to support those that want to deploy and want to operate on-premise. We, we've touched in this audio about our ability to provide 
technology and services into those three use cases. And we'll continue to evolve and grow our products to be able to support our customers, our trust service providers and our global governments as, as those new use cases arise. Yeah, and the, and the closeness to our customers is key, isn't it, Mike? You know, yep. making sure that we're watching what they're doing, what they want to be doing in the future and working closely with them, be that on premise or be that cloud, any way they want to do it. That closeness with our customers is, is really essential. And uh, I think Assertia prides itself on that.